In this video, we delve a little bit more deeply into the dependence of the Gibbs energy and temperature by deriving the Gibbs Helmholtz equation. All right, in the last video, we have seen how the Gibbs energy depends on its natural variables, which are pressure and temperature. And uh, what we have found out is that the dependence of the Gibbs energy on pressure, constant temperature uh, is the volume. And the first derivative of the Gibbs energy with temperature at constant pressure is the minus molar entropy. So we're going to continue to think about the variation of the Gibbs energy on temperature from a slightly different perspective. As we will see in the future, uh, rather than examining uh, the Gibbs energy variation with temperature, it sometimes it's very useful to examine how the ratio of the Gibbs energy over temperature depends on temperature. Right, so what we're actually trying to see is this, the variation of the ratio of the Gibbs energy over temperature with respect to temperature, obviously at constant pressure. It's not obvious why uh, this is the case, but it will be very clear once we start to think about uh, uh, concepts like equilibrium constants and things like that, it's very common to find uh, a ratio of the Gibbs energy over temperature, and then we'll want to try to examine how that depends on temperature. Right, so that's what we're going to try to do uh, right here in this video. Alright, so notice that what we have to do is take the first derivative of uh, uh, two functions, Gibbs and temperature, so we're going to invoke uh, the product rule of the first derivatives, right? So this is just going to be a function g and a function 1 over t, right? So the first derivative of that uh, is going to be, well, the first derivative of, uh, say, one of the uh, functions, which is the Gibbs energy, multiplied by the other function, so we'll have here 1 over t, then the derivative of the Gibbs energy with respect to temperature, constant pressure, and then uh, this will be plus the sum of uh, the function, this function g, uh, multiplied by the derivative of the other function, which is 1 over t. Right, so that would be the derivative of 1 over t with respect to t at constant pressure. All right, I'm going to be dropping the constant pressure uh, subindexes right here, or subscripts, uh, just for convenience. Right, this term is uh, fairly straightforward. Right, notice that what we have right here is the derivative of 1 over t with respect to t, so that is going to be minus 1 over t squared. So we can simply write this as g uh, multiplied by minus 1 over t squared. That's just uh, calculus. And for this one, uh, now we can use our knowledge of the sensitivity of the Gibbs energy and temperature at constant pressure. That's something that we have seen uh, previously. Notice that that is the minus molar entropy. Right, so what we have here is this will be uh, minus the molar entropy over T. Or uh, in this case, we're not using molar quantities, but that's just, uh, uh, that would apply also to molar quantities. Now we're going to try to, re to recast this entropy term that we have right there into something that is more useful. Right, so we simply invoke the definition of the Gibbs energy as H minus Ts enthalpy minus the product of the temperature and entropy and solve this expression for the minus entropy. When you solve this expression for the minus entropy, you get that that is going to be equal to Gibbs energy minus enthalpy over the temperature. Right, so we can come to this uh, particular expression there and say that that is simply going to be equal to uh, the Gibbs energy minus the enthalpy over T but we, 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 because we had another uh, temperature there, this will be uh, T squared. All right, so uh, that's uh, how this expression is uh, making progress. All right, so from here, the conclusion is going to be very simple. Right, so notice that what we have is, is the first derivative of the Gibbs energy over the temperature versus temperature, constant pressure. Right, this is simply going to be equal to uh, this term, which is exactly that, so the Gibbs energy minus the enthalpy over T squared plus this term, which we have seen is uh, minus G over T squared. And minus G over T squared. Okay? Alright. 
So this is now a much simpler expression where uh, obviously these uh, d over t squared terms cancelled and the only thing that you have left over is this minus h over t squared. Right? So that is your gibbs Helmholtz equation in which again the, the way that the ratio of the Gibbs energy over temperature changes with temperature at constant pressure is, is the minus uh, enthalpy over uh, temperature squared. Now, notice that every time that we're calculating these uh, thermodynamic state functions like Gibbs energy, enthalpy, internal energy, we're rarely calculating them in an absolute way, right? We're always interested in changes, right? So uh, it would be important to do the same thing here for this uh, expression, right? So again, notice that we're generally not interested in knowing what the absolute value of the Gibbs energy is. Instead, we want to know what the change in the Gibbs energy is, right? So if this is a chemical reaction, that will be the Gibbs energy of the reaction. Or if it's a phase transition, that will be the change in Gibbs energy in phase, phase transition. So what that means is that this H won't be H, but delta H, okay? So uh, that is, I'm going to consolidate this a little bit more, just to write the final expression and put it in a box, because that will be important for the future. Okay, we're not going to do any problems about this right now, but uh, uh, it was useful to do this derivation here because we just learned what this uh, first derivative is, and that is something that is integral to this derivation. That's what we're doing this here, and we will uh, rescue this, this expression later on when, when we need it. Okay, so this is the Gibbs Helmholtz expression. Will be very useful in the future. It tells you how uh, the Gibbs energy of a process divided over temperature depends on temperature.